Here are some examples on dealing with stock warrants. We're basically going to show the proportional method and the incremental method for valuing the warrants. Stock warrants are basically certificates that allow the holder to get some shares at a certain price when there's a, within a certain period that they do it. It's meant as an inducement to go ahead and make the investment. For our example, we're going to have 100 bonds, and the bond value is $1,000 a piece, and each bond has one warrant. Together, they're being sold at 101. That means 101%, or we multiply 1.01 times par. Even though the warrants can be individually priced at $35 a warrant, and the market price of the bonds is 97 which means that each $1,000 bond is really only going to be for $970. So already your mind should be thinking there's a discount on the bonds. And if we're discounting the bonds and the warrant and bond together combined to 101, there's a value to the warrant. If you know the market price of the warrant, you're going to use the proportional method. If you don't, and you only know the market price of the bond, you're going to use the incremental method. So think of it this way. The with and without method says together the bond and the warrant are at 101. If we know the value of the bond, we're left with the value of the warrant. But if we know the proportional method, we know the value of both. And if it differs, we've got to do some allocations. All along, in accounting, we've been talking about systematic and rational approach. And what we do is assign the proper proportion to the bond and to the warrant. Setting your problem up with these columns is helpful because you can pretty much use the same thing for the proportional method or the incremental method. And we start with the quantity. In our quantity, we know that we have a hundred bonds and each bond has one warrant so we have a hundred bonds and a hundred warrants. The amount of each bond is a thousand dollars per bond and they're sold at 97 is the market value so the total value of 100 bonds is ninety seven thousand dollars. Each warrant has a value of thirty five dollars or price of thirty five dollars so 100 warrants times $35 is 3500 So together we end up with 100500 But the bonds were sold at 101 That would be the 100 and 1000 So we need to do some allocation. If we take the 97000 divided by the 100500 we end up with 97%. The 3500 divided that gives us 3%. Now remember, this is one case where you really need to make sure your total percents add up to 100. So the proportional amount that's paid, 97% goes to the bonds and 3% goes to the warrants. Moving everything upward just to make it easy, we've got these amounts here. We know our percent allocations. If we take the bonds, 101,000 times 97%, is 97,483 goes to the bonds, and the warrants are 100,000, 3%, actually cal calculated out, is 3,517. So your entry is very easy. They're sold at 101,000, so that's going to be your debit to cash. Your credit to bonds payable is 97,483 for the bonds, and 3,517 for the warrants. So proportional methods, very simple. You have to know the bond and you have to know the uh, price of the warrant. But what do we do if we don't know the price of the warrant? We don't know the market value. It's an inducement to get people to invest in our bonds and there's gotta be some value to them. We're just not sure. So we're gonna use the incremental method. What that means is we're going to start with the value we know of the bonds, put that as the base, and say anything beyond that is the market price.
of the warrant. So we're using the same setup we used earlier. We had 100 bonds, each priced out $1,000 a piece and sold at a market value of 97 if they were sold separately without any warrants, totaling 97000 That's the known price. What we're going to do is figure out that the warrants has to be whatever's left over because the market would be driving the price and that's got to be the price we're attaching to the warrant. Now, if we're issuing things for 101000 we know the bond's at 97 so we know the warrant has to be at 4000 That's part one. But remember, we've got to allocate everything and put things in their proper categories. If the bond has a face value of 1000 and a market value, fair market, of 97000 that must mean that there's a $3,000 discount on the bonds payable. We have to keep that into account as well. So our journal entry is going to show all of these items. Our entry is very simple. We're receiving 101000 because that's the market price that we know is for the bond and the warrants. We're crediting bonds payable for 97000 and we're crediting paid and capital stock warrants. The accounts are exactly the same under the proportional method as the incremental method. It's the amounts that are different. What also happens is that effective interest table we're going to do to bring the bonds payable up to the 100000 each year is going to be different because when we're dealing with the proportional method, we had a different amount. We had $97,483. So we would be amortizing that amount. If we're using the incremental method, we're going to be amortizing the 97000 but the end result's going to be the same. The bonds payable at the end of the life is going to be 100000 So that's part one that's different. The other part is the paid and capital stock warrants is slightly different. But that's how you handle your systematic and rational approach to journal entries and recording uh, stock warrants.